uh, J77 here, somewhat back from my um, sh from my little vacation I took in August. Uh, I needed to do a lot of things, more personal things than anything else. Uh, did have a little fun to see a couple movies, of course, um, and uh, we'll be talking about the movies I've seen in upcoming audio or vid live video feed uh, down the road. But this is not. Uh, uh, that type of video. In fact, this is actually a more of a response video of a very, very serious subject matter. Now, normally, I don't put these type of um, topics on this channel. Either it's going to be exclusively for Matic Expression or um, pretty much part of the other channel, which I haven't used in a while. Got to get back to that. Um, and uh, basically keep this channel pretty much, you know, pretty much entertainment purposes only. But because of of the nature of this response video and because of the brilliant job Positive Writer 08 have done in terms of expressing itself, uh, concern and a dissatisfaction with a particular um, story in hand, a, a very serious subject matter in hand, um, this allowed me to uh, voice my own opinion as well as sh also spread the word about the continuing situation that's going on in Nigeria. Now. I might as well say also, this will also bring up some very issues that I have constantly have seen when it comes to dealing with these matters, not just outside of the United States, but pretty much in the around the country abroad. Uh, it's a situation that I think that everyone as human beings um, should really take a close look at themselves more so than the, our politics and our media. Need to say there's a whole lot of stuff that uh, that is brought into one. Um, for the record, I actually was planning to talk about this a lot sooner, but because of how delicate this subject matter is, and because I didn't really want this to go fresh out of my mind in anger, I decided to A, do some more research on this topic at hand, B, um, you know, really sit down with myself, ask myself about me as an individual, as well as how I view the world, C, um, some of the topics that um, Father Vida always have blown up in her video, uh, which um, allowed me to do a response video as well as keeping people um, in, the, in the loop about what's actually been going on in Nigeria and with the girls who are still missing, who was taken from their school by militants uh, to be sold off as um, brides or even become child soldiers. Yeah, it's a very, very serious uh, issue, but it's also an issue that has more layers than I think we're seeing uh, or we're allowed to see by the media and by politicians. So a lot of this stuff uh, that, I, that I wanted to talk about, I wanted to be very careful uh, but most importantly I wanted to be as honest and as open as possible because uh, it's not as simple or, had, uh, or the problem is as easy solved that I think one may one realize and after one year uh, of no progress it's very evident that there's a whole lot more layers and just say let bring back our girls um, should they be back with their family members absolutely there was no reason no justification for a bunch of people to storm into a school a place of learning a place where um, uh, men and women boys and girls should be safe in um, only to have them being taken away on gunpoint in the dead of night and just pretty much disappear without any um, trace with them and in case you guys are not in the loop or don't know what I'm talking about, um, here's the small abbreviation. On April 15th of last year, um, a bunch of militants from Nigeria, uh, from Nigeria have stormed in the dead of night into a village uh, in a school campus ground, guns blazing with vans and buses, and basically kidnapped about 200 plus women. 200 plus girls um, doing the break at night. They came in, you know, guns pointed, um, terror all over the place, and they strolled out of there. And uh, this pretty much sparked a worldwide anger all across the globe. A lot of people had uh, voiced their anguish, their concern. Um, a lot of politicians had voiced saying this is outrageous, unacceptable. Um, even from um, a, a hashtag. Um, bring back our girls, uh, which is something that um, that I had followed when I was working in Manhattan, 
when I was um, reading up on it and the news was uh, was talking about it, this was a very big issue, a very hot issue, and a lot of people was trying to get involved to find these girls. There was a task force that was supposed to be formed to find these well, these girls, and as the months started dwindling, um, each month started passing, you heard less and less and less to the point where you barely heard anything at all. Um, it was pretty much under the microscopic um, radar because news moved on to the more um, sexier story. Um, a lot of things also has been going on across at home here. And so with all that situation, that news, that was a very serious news, a very hot topic news, a news that was um, worthy of being reported had just basically had been pushed to the sideline never to be mentioned again by any of the major outlines. I say major because there were still smaller outlets that was talking about it and was trying to keep it in the news but unless you really do your research and really start digging in you probably won't know what's going on. I have an article I will leave a link to it you guys can read it, you guys can um, even comment on it, um, but it is important that you at least read up on this update. It was something that is the um, the latest update I can actually possibly find and it's backed up by other sources that I actually connected with. But apparently, after one year of um, these girls being abducted from their schools, Nigeria has not made any progress at all. In fact, they pretty much stopped looking. Um, According to this article, the, the, the families have given up on their government because they was told um, one thing by, you know, you know, told one thing by them where in reality it wasn't happening. And this went on for quite some time. This went on for uh, a while to the point where now um, a lot of people is pretty much begging the United States to get involved. Um, Kerry has spoken about it, the reporters have talked to him about it, whether um, they can actually uh, push, uh, the United States can push them to, to make a better progress. Um, he said he'd been, been trying, but the progress um, is not as simple as it is, and I believe it, I believe him when he said it. it's not as simple as it is, because again, there is a whole lot uh, more to what we have been getting um, than what many people want to realize or care to realize. Uh, but he said he was going to speak it up with the House. They're going to see if they can um, bring more pressure for the Nigerian government to step it up. But the reality is, if the Nigerian government is not stepping up uh, and not making an effort to search for these girls, the chances are they're not trying to search for girls. They don't want to search for these girls. And that's a very damn shame that that's, um, that has occurred to it. But again, we're talking about a lot of um, layers here that I think a lot of people have not taking consideration. Um, I'm going to bring up some of the stuff that Positive Writer 08 have brought up and uh, for the record uh, I would advise people to also take a look at Positive Writer 08's video. Um, she is a wonderful vlog, um, vlogger, um, a very respectful, uh, very knowledgeable vlogger for her age and I ask you uh, to not only um, you know, listen to what she had to say, but give uh, respectable feedback, whether you agree with her uh, views or not. Um, I say that because uh, if you're going to be cursing like a mad dog and basically, you know, showing no sign of respect for her because she, she does want you to be able to refrain from cursing, she has her belief and I respect that dearly. Not to say that you can't disagree with her, but show the respect and, you know, say, I disagree, this is why, instead of just, you know, basically cursing her out. Um, but, um, give her that respect. Uh, if you're going to go and watch the video, keep an open mind. You can, you can agree with what she said, don't agree with what she says, but uh, at least be respectful with the comments. But trust me, when you see it, you will understand why um, I have made um, <clears throat> this video and why I feel that it needs to be really about time we start really talking about the layers um, that leads to this. First of all, um, let's just talk about the situation here. Um, one of the article, the article had brought up something that I kind of, I scratched my head because it's not just one civilization. A lot of these male tents uh, from these countries um, have, a, have it in for the United States. Um, they have it in for the education the United States have, they have it in for uh, a way of living. There's no question about that. Um, they also have a very grudge against women, women of power, 
women who is trying to achieve um, a better quality for themselves, those who are independent. Um, these are all playing into um, what's been going on here. Because the, one of the major arguments that these militants always have is we're fighting against Western education. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not Western education they're fighting against. It's education, period. Any education that can better their people is deemed a threat to them. Okay, um, Education is the greatest enemy for any of these um, oppressors across the globe. They don't want people to be educated and they, they will do anything they can to make sure they don't receive the education. Um, and one of the main uh, reasons is, is the less education uh, education a civilization or a particular group people have, the more power they have over them. And so in a place like this where women are not treated as equals but pretty much treated as properties, an education system dedicated for women is considered a very dangerous threat where they will they are willing to kill innocent people to make sure they don't get it. And all you need to do is look at the articles, um, the teenager who was shot in the head because she spoke out for education for, for girls, um, a, despicable, um, a despicable act. And the fact that they actually think that this is because they disrespected God is even more despicable when all it is is about power. All right. Education is knowledge, knowledge is power, and, uh, and even to this country, there's a lot of people who will do stop at nothing to make sure um, certain people don't get that type of power, um, that type of knowledge to bet themselves. Um, like I said, they feel themselves up here, and they feel the only way to keep someone beneath them is to make sure they're less, educa less educated, um, less informed. Um, and continue to fight amongst the cause that is they, that is irrelevant to the point there is no cause. Um, if you think the United States, again, I can't stress this more, if you think the United States are immune to this, you're wrong. The United States is not immune to it. Uh, we have people all the time trying to um, trying to water down our educational system. In fact, there are politicians who aren't actually elected in office by the people who are who have divided education to the point where only the people with the biggest green will have the best education. If you don't have the green, well, we'll give you education, but it'll be the most bare bone minimum possible. And that's why we have such a rigorous and terrible education system to this day. Um, it's because it, it, there is no equal, there is no equal educational system in this country, and that's not by coincidence. Um, a lot of these um, states, a lot of these um, counties or towns, see this as a disadvantage for them, and for to keep the people in check, to keep them, um, to keep them from actually better themselves, or actually be aware of what's going on, they rather have um, have the education system watered down to where it could dumb down our youth. To the point where they they won't be aware of the idiocy or the dumbness that's going on. Like I said, the less education, the more power some of these people believe they have over you. And this is no exception. To what's going on in these countries? They see education as a threat. They see it as a dangerous threat to them. And that's one of the main reasons why you hear stuff like this going on here. The, the bombings of schools, destruction of schools, there's no reason for that to do it. They do it because of a one, one that's giving power to the people they don't want them to have. Education is power, more so than I think everybody can to believe. And that's where it leads down to. A lot of these, civil, a lot of these countries, um, or especially those who are corrupt, who are still stuck in third world thinking, um, don't see women as their equal. Paula Ryder always says that um, sex trafficking, especially with children, is still in existence. Yes, it is. Uh, more so, I think many people realize there's a lot of stories I have uh, read, I have followed of child marriages resulting into the, the, uh, the child's deaths um, because her body was not even developed for that situation and the, the assault was so brutal it killed her in a honey and it killed her in a honeymoon um, yet you hardly hear any arrests why because in that country they don't considered that as a crime 
um, where we here, um, we do see as a crime, to them, in most countries, they don't. Um, they consider it's perfectly normal to marry someone who's only nine years old. They do, and it's not just the Middle East, it's from other countries, Asia and other countries that you would think that doesn't, it doesn't happen, it goes on, it goes on. And a lot of reasons for this is, again, economics. Um, most of these um, girls are seen as property. Um, to, to, to provide and make ends meet, they are willing to sell um, these girls or these girls' virginity to a very rich person who is willing to pay um, the money for it. It's a sad reality, but this is what we're dealing with. And again, a lot of this had to do with lack of education, lack of awareness, lack of the damaging effects it has on a person being treated like this. But again, this is just, it, it, it's all about the, the culture. And sometimes the culture, you just you scratch your head. You don't you say, how can they think like this? But you got to look at what the culture is doing to further understand why this still exists today. And again, it goes right back to education. It goes back, back to not being informed. And it also goes back to desperation and survival. A lot of these countries do not have um, the resources that the United States have or most of the Western countries have. Uh, and it's unfortunate. I, I can tell you right now, the people who, who was waving those guns, shooting those guns, um, those who are firing rocket launchers, don't know basic math. Don't know what, the hell, how to multiply anything. They probably never even stepped into a school before in their life, but they know how to fire that rocket. They can tell you how to take that rocket launcher apart and put it back together. They can tell you what, what kind of gun it is, how it works, what um, bullets are used for the guns. I guarantee you, most of them can't tell you what, what one plus one is. And uh, all you need to do is look at some of these documentaries, these real, raw, unedited documentaries to see the scenario, the situation of the problem and who these who are these terrorists really recruiting. Now, there are some exceptions. We have already seen stories of how a lot of the recruits are college students and, and um, you know, high, rich middle class families, children of middle class families. But in the majority of these countries, a lot of these um, a lot of these um, soldiers or child soldiers have been pretty much been put in this position to say, hey, we're the enemy, we got to treat the enemy, uh, without even asking themselves, why am I fighting this war? Why am I in school? Why am I not trying to get my set of education? To them, this is all they know. And the same can be said about a lot of these, uh, these militants. These militants see us as the enemy. The militants see anything that they see that goes against their cause, a threat. And they use religion, they use any type of excuse, but the reality is they see education as a threat. They see women as property. And these militants that, uh, will stop at nothing to make sure that their way and only their way is gets seen without any other alternative whatsoever. And this is why radical thinking can be very dangerous if it's not kept in check. Now, as for the uh, the media not covering this, I'm gonna save that for last because there's another reason. There's something else I feel that's more important to talk about, and that is Nigeria and government and how they just certainly stopped. I'm not shocked that they stopped searching for these girls because, frankly, I think some of them who are in government also is in cahoots with some of the militants um, that is uh, running amok in these countries. I really do, okay. And when I hear the stories, and I constantly, I constantly scratch myself saying, "You tell me a bunch of militants come in at dead of night, machine guns and buses. No way didn't notice this. They shoot up a um a school, just kidnap these women, and they just bounce left, and no one, no officials, um, came to no one aid. No one didn't decide to call the cops. No one done anything." I find that very dis disturbing and also find it very shocking that that's happened. But then again, I have to ask myself, are some of these, uh, so, uh, is the government in cahoots with some of these guys? Or some of these high militants, these um, terrorists, if you, uh, if, you, if you want to call them that, um, are they paying off the government to make sure they don't get captured? It wouldn't fly me, it wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, surprise me one bit. Just like uh, a few years ago when Bin Laden was found 
just a few yards away from a military base in a, in, Af in Afghanistan. They were like, wait a minute, he was there the whole time and nobody bothered to check that, that area that's not supposed to be there. Nobody didn't think the need to to, uh, to investigate that. So there's a, there's a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of politics, there's a whole lot of things going on that behind the scenes that we're not aware of. And that's largely because A, the government doesn't want you to be aware of, including ours, and B, the government in many ways are in cahoots with some of these um, terrorist groups. You know, and this is uh, and it's unfortunate because this is the this is the kind of thing reason why progress is never gets made. Uh, some, and to be honest with you, would it surprise you that some of these governments uh, want this to happen to keep control, make sure that the, the population control? It doesn't. But this is some of the stuff that's been going on. So if you're wondering why this is happening, why it hasn't been any progress, all you need to do is look at what Nigeria is doing. And pretty much Nigeria is it, it's in, it's in, by, by itself what they're doing, how much effort they plan to do. And why they haven't made any effort to do it? I think the answer is right there. And the United States, I know people say the United States is, should get involved. The United States should uh, should do, do something. The United States is no angel when it comes to this either, because I said it before, most of the time the United States get involved when there's something in it for them, which will bring me to another topic later on in this in this audio. But this is ain't the problem. It's not just one problem people are speaking out. It's a whole lot of layers we need to really look at. Really, really look at. Uh, which brings me to the media. Positive Troll Bong, the Positive Writer, sorry, Positive Writer 08 Bong, this very important, um, very important thing that she have noticed. When she was sitting down with her father, um, she had mentioned that uh, there was uh, a couple, I think a girls, I, think, well, I don't know, I forgot the number, 50 or 60 girls rescued. <coughs> Yet, there was no mentioning of the girls who were taken a year ago in the schools in Nigeria. I think I brushed this up real, real briefly during the beginning of this audio, but are you shocked? Our media is no longer media. Our news it's really not even news anymore. Our news is entertainment. Our news is whatever is trending, whatever is hot right now. It doesn't matter if it has any kind of educational or informative substance. If it's hot, they will report it. Uh, i give you a perfect example. There was something very important going on in Congress. Um, the lady was speaking and they actually did, we interrupt this program for a late breaking news. It wasn't about something happened, a uh, person got shot in the school or anything else, or some serial killer was on loose, or a major snowstorm was coming. The breaking news was Justin Bieber being arraigned in court. Everybody criticized this. This was, I believe, CNN who did this. Everybody was like, seriously, you interrupted this woman who had an important piece of legislation that may or may not be passed in office, something that may affect the way we do shopping online, the way we do business online, the way people can open business themselves online, to talk about Justin Bieber and his antics, something that could be saved for the 10 o'clock news, pre-recorded, you actually interrupted something very important for this. Um, this is not the first time we've seen a lot of stupid antics, both from Fox, both from CNN, both from MSNBC, you name it. Um, it's gotten to the point where now, more than ever, news has just become, news has become a joke. There really isn't a, in terms of the major networks, there really isn't a major foundation to actually report respectable, objective news anymore. If you want that kind of news where they don't have a side, where you know they're not politically influenced by any party, who is just going to be there and tell the news and tell like it is, you have to look for it. You have to search for it. Because once a topic goes old, they will not speak of it again unless, it, unless something sparks it back up. And it's unfortunate that it's like this, but that's what we're dealing with right now in terms of the 
media in terms of our social networks um, the news isn't the news anymore I remember um, going to the store and I noticed that um, one particular store uh, owner was carrying one couple of piece of paper, newspapers but won't carry one piece of paper and he told me that hey I don't care because they don't have no substance it's, it's not they be, be pointing out some dumb stuff that has no substance whatsoever and they lied now one can say that these papers are not are doing just as much this is uh, much of the same thing as the other one but he is one of the reasons why he won't carry newspapers he also said that people don't really even buy the newspapers anymore because people get their information online or through their phone which is true all right and here's the thing about it. this is why I give kudos to John Stewart and he will be missed um, he did a tremendously great job with the Daily Show uh, and the person who's gonna come um, behind him is gonna have a hard fill to shoe but he made fake news which that's what it was it was fake news real news because the stuff he was mentioning even though it was entertainment even though it was fake they had a long, strong philosophy and a point to what he was doing. And that's not a good sign when people consider a new a show that's supposed to be a parody of news more informative than the actual news itself. So when Father Vida always said that she was surprised, in all fairness, she shouldn't be because we didn't really have a honest, fair uh, news reports uh, in this country in a very long time. A lot of these um, affiliates like Fox, they're they're closing it to a certain agenda. They bought by a company who has who wants them to speak their agenda, who has a who made a blueprint of how to manipulate people to believe their views. What you do is look at the Fox uh, Fox News and Friends. Look at how MSNBC does this news. Look at Channel Two. I guarantee you, you can tell where their agenda is going at um, just by hearing what they have to say, um, how they're speaking to the audience, and this is the kind of news we're getting. All right? We're not really getting informative news. We're really not. We're not getting the news that we need to know. We're not getting the news that we should know. All right? This is a news that the only reason why they actually even reported on the Nigeria thing because it was such a shock that everybody was talking about it everyone across the country was talking about it they'd be fools not to talk about it but as always when things started dying down and things sort of you know breeze past they could able to slowly filter out now the news is still out there there are people still reporting it there are people still going out there their, their way to make sure to give people update but it's very few and far in between and um, Father and Ryder always also brought up something that is also very key here, and it's very key here, that we're just as much to blame for not asking our news outlet to follow up. Because she mentioned about the trending, about, you know, bring our girls back, bring, you know, it, you know, it was, it was a big, big thing. And she mentioned that it has stopped trending, it mentioned that it hasn't been mentioned in any of the social networks. And I said, that's a big mistake. Uh, we need to keep mentioning. We need to pressure our government to say, "Hey, what's going on here? What's 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 happening? Are you guys making any progress? Are the girls back home?" Because the moment we stop, it's also the moment they say, "Well, we don't need to follow this anymore. Nobody cares." And this is something that Paulo Ryder 08 was trying to say to our audience. Because when I saw a video, and I saw as I looked at the video from the beginning to end. I also strolled down because she mentioned something. She said, don't just give me a response. Make a video. Make an audio. Make something to pass the word on. I looked at all of the comment sessions. I looked at all the people who was agreeing with her. But I also noticed something else. She wasn't responding. And I knew why she wasn't responding. Because she said she doesn't want compliments. She wants action. She'd be more than happy if you gave a video and talk about the situation and you know, speak your mind on the situation and I applaud her for that I, I really did because I said yeah this is what you, you it's not enough just to give comments anybody can give comments but it's another thing is if you're gonna sit down and actually talk about the issue at hand 
See, I can do a short video. I know this video is going to be long. But I feel there's a lot more to just, you know, you know shouting out and you know, saying, you know, we got to keep this alive and everything else. We have to really come to terms, not just with the situation that leads to stuff like this, but also look at ourselves. I'm going to say something that's probably going to tick off a lot of people. And so be it. But it has to be said. It has to be said on all levels, whether you're black, white, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, whatever. We are a very selfish group of people. We're very, very selfish. We sometimes tend to believe, and I don't have to take my word for it, just look at yourself. I, I'm included too. I am now innocent in this situation. I'm, I'm speaking, when I say we, I'm talking about myself as well. We tend to believe that if we make a box and only a certain people who's in this box, nothing else outside can hurt us. This invisible wall that we have is our own reality and nothing else outside this, this wall can come, to come hurt us. If something happens, whether it's 16 months away or, or across the country, if it happens over there, better you than me. It didn't happen to me, so I shouldn't care. That is a selfishness um, that is constantly putting us down. It's a selfishness that also creates hate. It also creates uh, miscommunication and misunderstanding towards cultures and other uh, things that keeps us apart. We tend to make this little box and you know nothing else can harm us. Um, there was an old saying that a politician won't do anything because until it actually affects them, then they realize this is serious, we need to do something. And a person said, well, we were telling you that this was happening. We were telling you this was hurting us. Why did it have to take, take something happening to you to realize how serious the situation is? The answer is very simple because he wasn't thinking about it. About it. As long as it didn't hurt him or affect his family, he didn't have no reason to care about the situation or the topic at hand. To this day, a lot of people see the situation in Nigeria as not my problem, not my kids. Um, you know, let them deal with this. This has nothing to do with me. That is a thinking uh, that is dangerous and can also lead to um, this stuff continuing because a lot of people say, this is not my problem. This is not my um, issue. I'm not going to interfere. And history serves where you don't, when you don't um, step up and speak up about the injustice that's going on, stuff continues to the point where it can become even more tragic. Um, this is the thing. Um, um, this is the main thing, one of the main things um, that leads to stuff like this. It's a selfish way of thinking. You think those guys are, are these, these guys who claim they're you know, doing this for the Lord and all this other nonsense, you think they really are doing it? No, they're not. They're doing it for themselves. They took these women, they divided them on themselves, they sell them off without any disregard to their feelings or to their lives or the effects they're going to have on them in the future. They don't even look at them as humans. They don't. That's property to them. And whether you know it or not, we have to say this this stuff don't just include and in some of these countries. You may want to believe all oh, the third world countries. No, we have our issues here. We have our own radical radical groups here who think this way. Who feels um, that their skin color or um, their upbringing make them superior. I remember, and this was a great video, it started out as a prank, it was a prank video, but it ended up being something more. It stopped being a prank after a while, because he was doing an experiment, and the experiment was, they were pretending to be homeless, and the gag was, instead of them giving them money, you know, when you know you walk down there, you know how they beg for money, they was going to give the person money and you would think it'd be kind of you 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 think to kind of 
have a mixed feeling with it, but the reactions were almost insulting. They were more insulted that they was giving money, and some of the reactions here was kind of crazy. It was only two people who actually gave a positive response. Uh, I was a woman who at first said she didn't have any money, but when he said he was going to give her money, he said, oh, no, 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 you know, it, 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 you, you take it, you need it more than I do. I mean, you know, I have two dollars, and, you know, they saw it was a prank, but they said that they felt good, that they made their day, because she looked past, you know, that rush feeling, you know, the ignore feeling. There was another guy, and it was actually three of them, that was nasty. Uh, and the guy said, I got no money, and he said, well, I'm giving you money. He said, are you serious? Look at that, that's my car. I can buy you. That was the response. And the guy who was supposed to be doing the prank says, Man, don't buy happiness, Trim. You were probably the miserable person in the world. And they got in the heat because they were able to come to blow. They said, you Walk away. You ain't going to do nothing. Walk away. And he was so angry that he stopped. He stopped the prank because it was no longer about the prank. It, was, it, it stopped being about the prank. But I was very happy he did that because it shows some of the ugliness that some of these people have some of the um, some of the the false sense of power they have if I can best sum that up you know, oh I got all this money I can buy you I can own you how dare you give me that money my, my sneakers are worth more than you that kind of attitude that kind of this, that kind of this things that still goes on. Do you think that don't go on right now? Some of these people who think they have all this wealth, most of the time they look down on the people who works on who works for them, who don't make them rich. The same people who um, they don't want to pay a uh, a good amount of wagers. The same people who go to other countries to escape paying fair wages. They will go to other countries and have children make their own make those, those clothes for 10 and 15 cents an hour in the name of commerce. This is the kind of selfishness that I'm talking about. There's a whole lot of layers, but this is one of them. And um, when seeing that and when you hear that, it's one thing when you when you you hear stuff like that, it's another thing when you see it all close and personal. When you see it, I've seen it. I had arguments about it. Still have arguments about it to this day. But again, there's a selfishness that we don't want to let go of what we have. Two, we feel that we shouldn't be given to some people, especially when we feel they haven't earned it. And three, we're not consistent enough when it comes to certain things that we are supposed to be righteous about. So there is all, like I said, the onion has a lot of layers to this. There's our own self greed, our own selfishness. There's the fact that a lack of education, a lack of resources play a very strong knowledge and other stuff has happened. There's also a fact that most of the stuff, most of the information is muzzled because the media don't feel that it is the trending topic at the time or being muffled by the same people who's above them. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on. And until we really understand that is when real serious process um, can be made. Now it can still be made, trust me. It, it can still, well, we can still, you know, just by talking about it, just by bringing this up, that's the first step. Like I said, um, there's no reason why the Nigerian government, the United States, or even the United Nation should, should stop searching for these girls and bring them home to their family where they belong. There should be no reason why a militant group can just freely walk in, walk, march into a school, shoot up the school, and take these girls, or any kind of militants, to come into the school and burn the school to the ground. There should be no reason why the government seemed relentless to keep, uh, to take charge, and to hunt down these people who try to who constantly try to oppress um, their own kill innocent people in the name of what they believe in regardless if it's radical or not 
There's no reason for that. But to do that, we have to really take serious into this topic. We need to really look at ourselves. We need to look at how we, as 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 as, as human beings, view the world. It starts with us ourselves. I can sit here and say, you know, we need to do something, we need to go in, but I gotta look at myself. I gotta look at how I view things. I gotta look at my own ways, if my own ways um, is, you know, causing the problem. There's a whole lot of stuff going on. It's not just one, it's a whole lot of topics that needs to be, that needs to be looked at. And I feel that until we really take these topics seriously, until we look past our own selfishness in many ways, until we understand just how important education is to everybody, not just a select few, until we understand how it's important to keep, you know, to educate ourselves, um, to look for the, for the information and not have the media dictates what is, what is right and what is not then we're going to continue hearing stories about this. I think I've said pretty much enough. I hope I haven't gone too much with the rambling. I know I did a little bit of that, but I feel it's important that that we start looking at all the aspects of what led to these women being kidnapped in Nigeria. It's not just they just came in and got to know there's a whole lot of elements and a lot of it if we look at it we have some more to do with some of the stuff we're fighting here in this country in the United States we're actually fighting for better education we're fighting for you know equal rights for equal pay for all that's an ever struggling and yet despite this being the land of, of the free we're still fighting people who want to oppress and keep people down based on their religion or their um, their race or their sexuality. If you think we're any innocent between all this, or well, mean for that, you're wrong. Because we're still fighting right now. The fight still continues. And all you need to do is look at how we view things, how we see the world, how we think we, the world should be looked at, and see where they are and how messed up they are and how um, things over there need to change because a lot of stuff that happens they don't consider it um, as a crime and a lot of stuff that happens um, is all launched because they do not want what we sometimes take for granted here in the United States that is education and a chance to better ourselves they don't want that I hope I, uh, I gave a better. Res I gave this best response to Public Vital 08 uh, when making this video. Again, it took me a while, uh, but I felt the need that I need. I didn't want to make a rush video. I didn't want to sit to do to you know just throw something out there just for the sake of throwing something out there. I really wanted to think about this because it's more it's more of a personal statement than I think many people want to believe or care to believe. And I. I hearing that this story it, it really saddens me that this still goes on it still saddens me that uh, people still think of women as nothing more than property uh, that they can do whatever the hell they want and using uh, sexual assault as the way to dominate they, their power it, it's just disgusting all right um, and to me the story should continue that, that people still should talk about it. they should continue to voice their concern, to voice their opinions, to voice um, their disapproval of how um, the United Nations as well as the governments have been handled with this. And they should get on Nigeria to say, hey, it's been a year, what the hell are you doing? You haven't made no progress since then. Let's go. It's time. All right, enough is enough. These girls have been away from their homes enough. It's time to bring these girls home. It's time to bring them not only home, but to have these men these um these um terrorists to answer for their crime because there's no reason for that but with that being said i think it's also time 
for us to really look at ourselves and ask ourselves, are we also, if our way of thinking also contribute to that as well? You'd be surprised. Well, that's all I got to say for now. Positive writer, I, I will say leave it at this. You did a great job with your um, video. Um, I hope a lot more people see it. I hope that this will also help bring um, light to not only towards um, the situations going on in Nigeria, but also brings light to your topic because I believe that everybody should see what you have to say. Um, it is, it's not as long as mine, it's just 16 minutes, but yes, I agree with what you said that closed mouths don't get the job done. People should open them up, uh, speak, um, continue speaking about this, continue to keep um, this thing going so that way the media and the governments won't try to muffle it or try to push it to the side. Um, this is, we have the power to do that. And if you think we don't have the power, all to say is SOPA, PIPA, people spoke people voiced their, their harsh approval, it was overwhelming, and guess what? The government took a second look at that and said, hey, we can't mess with this right now. <laughs> then leave it alone. But it all comes to us. We have the voice, and we got the power now, we got the internet. We got YouTube, we got Twitter, we got Facebook, we have all sorts of social media networks. Keep the topic going. Don't let it fade out. Don't let this be another trending topic where it's hot news one month and next thing you know, we're not even, no one's even talking about or keeping updates. Don't let the media muffle it out. Keep it going. Help people count for four. And for the families of those missing girls, I feel you. I really do. All right. You know, my heart and prayers is with you. All right. And uh, I hope that the, that the United States as well as the UN, as well as other countries step up their game and get these girls home because it's been, they wait long enough. It's time to bring them home. Again, props up to Pilot Right Away. I'll leave a link below to a channel. You can also take a look at the latest update also on the, the bottom screen below. And until next time, this is J77 saying take care, be safe, talk to you next time. Bye-bye.